so welcome back to the channel once again and this is going to be the second episode and we are going to learn about interpreters so if you're ready let's begin so the main difference between compilers and interpreters is that interpreters execute the operations one line at a time and unlike compilers interpreters don't generate machine code but they do generate the intermediate code that is basically termed as bytecode which is then fed to a designed virtual machine which is not an actual machine but it's a form of processing unit which can actually understand the bytecode don't worry we will have a video on python virtual machines as well so for now you must remember that the python virtual machine is a form of processing unit that can actually understand the bytecode that is basically used to generate the output you need so here is you waiting to execute your program so this is your source program and this is the interpreter but don't think that it does not use a compiler it surely does just like in python we use cpython compilers so here also it translates the source into abstract syntax tree for syntax and semantic analysis or it can as well generate the three address code depending on the compiler okay so remember when you execute your python file that is the py file it gets converted to the byte code that is basically your pyc file and then it gets executed by the python virtual machine so once the job of the compiler is complete it generates the byte code which is then fed to the python's virtual machine and which in turn executes the program and you might ask like how does python virtual machine know which operation i'm going to perform or if there is a separate module that i'm using so it extracts all the information that you want from the libraries and if you haven't installed any library that it wants that will throw an exception okay so remember when you execute your python file there is a py file it gets converted to the byte code that is a pyc file and then it gets executed by the python's virtual machine and it uses the libraries and modules to provide the instruction that is needed for the execution of your program okay so this is a simple way to understand how the interpreter works so understand it still has a compiler even though it is a interpreter but there is a specific purpose of the compiler okay to generate the byte code that this python virtual machine can understand and generate the output for you okay let's move on so now let's see what we have in the high level summary for an interpreter so you have your source code you feed it to the interpreter it uses a custom compiler which then translates it to the byte code which is then fed to the python's virtual machine and we get the output okay so this is a simple way to summarize the interpreters so here it shows us the clear difference where the compiler generates the machine code that is then fed to the processing unit to generate the output on the other hand the interpreter executes the instructions by generating the intermediate code that is the byte code and which is fed to the virtual machine and it yields the output so i want to keep things simple and i want you to read more on this topic because this will help understand more about any language that you learn so mostly compiler based languages are like cobol basic c c++ whereas python is termed to be an interpreted language where you can execute a single line of code in the interpreter and you can write your own code in a file as well and execute it but internally it will execute one line at a time remember that let's move on so now let's see some more comparisons between compilers and interpreters so we have the compiler here we have the interpreter here let's see the first difference then so the compiler reads the whole program at once but the interpreter reads the program line by line this i think we have already discussed by this time you should be able to clearly understand this so the compilers execute the whole program at once and the interpreter basically executes one line at a time and generates the machine code this is absolutely right and the next point that we have is uh, compilers actually generate an intermediate object code but this on the other hand the interpreter does not generate any intermediate object code it basically generates the byte code and then basically it is fed to the machine to process uh, and yes it requires more memory the compilers basically require more memory because they have to process a lot of information at once and interpreters basically require less memory because they execute one line at a time and which obviously takes less memory so now let's see how a python execution cycle looks like so let's see a sample program here so there's a source program that i have and basically there are five lines in this program that i've written so my expense is 15000 and my earning is basically 1500 which is uh, sad but uh, it's the truth okay so moving on so my annual income is basically my earnings into 12 
and my per day income is basically my earnings by 30 and this is the print statement that i have written at the end okay so this source program basically when you pass it to the interpreter as you all know it executes instructions line by line so the first statement gets executed so my expense equal to 15000 so yes it is able to identify that my expense is a variable and 15000 is the integer that has been assigned to it okay then it moves to the second line my earnings is equal to 1500 that is a string so it is also fine the third one that you have here is my annual expense is equal to my expense into 12 this is also fine no problem with this and then it comes down to the fourth line and the fifth line so when the execution starts it is fine with this line because this is a basic assignment it is also fine with the second line this is also a basic assignment and this is fine for the third line as well because this is a basic arithmetic operation when it comes to the fourth one you see an error because in python you cannot divide strings with integers so as you see my earnings is 1500 and it is a string and we are trying to divide it by 30 it will raise a type error and what happens is after that any lines that you have will not get executed and now i hope you understand how python actually interprets the program line by line so it goes through one line at a time and if suppose there is any problem or any error it shoots out the error at that point itself so i hope this was interesting enough to understand so let's move on so now let's see what happens when you execute your python source code so we have the source program here that is a file.py when you pass it to the interpreter the first phase of the interpreter it basically generates the byte code okay that is basically the pyc file and along with the byte code it generates the timestamp of the byte code okay it's basically the creation time okay so every file that you generate will have a creation date right or creation time or modification time if you modify that similar to this byte code will also have a timestamp and this byte code will be fed to the python's virtual machine and then you will get the output you see this happy man he is very happy that he has got the output <laughs> okay so basically what happened here is you pass the program to the interpreter you generate the byte code with the timestamp and then the python virtual machine executes it and you get the output okay so this is how a simple cycle of python execution looks like on a high level okay let's move on so what happens if this person tries to execute the program once again when you execute the python file once again what the interpreter does is it checks if there is an existing byte code or not so if it is not there it will create a new byte code okay if it does then what happens it tries to match the timestamp okay so timestamp will vary or it will be different if you have modified the python file or the source code that you have written since the last time that you had executed the code okay let's suppose you executed the code at 7 30 and you have modified it between that time till 8 o'clock and you executed the program at 8 o'clock once again it will generate a new byte code okay so what happens here is the interpreter is really smart okay so what it does it checks whether you have a old byte code or not okay so if your byte code is old then what it does is it creates a new byte code okay and it tells you that yeah you had modified the code which i had previously executed so i'll create a new byte code for you okay so on the other hand if you haven't modified the code that you had it will use the same existing byte code it will not generate a new byte code again okay and this byte code or this one based on what type of operations that you have performed will be fed to the virtual machine and you'll get the output so remember this cycle once again you execute the program once again the interpreter basically checks if there is a byte code that is present or not if not then it executes and creates a new byte code if yes then it tries to match the timestamp and if it finds the timestamp to be old then it creates the new byte code if it is same then it uses the same byte code okay and in python you should remember if you have a byte code you can execute the byte code instead of the file itself so if you have a py file that you have the source code and you have the pyc file for that you can execute it using the pyc file as well by typing python space file.pyc okay that way also you can execute your programs so i hope this was clear enough to understand if you still have any doubts and uh, if you want to learn more about how the execution cycle works or how the python virtual machine works please put them on the comment section below so that i can get some inspiration to make those videos and if you really like the way i have presented and visualized these topics then please hit the like button and please do subscribe if you are new 
okay so that's my humble request mm, so that was a lot of information isn't it but i hope it was interesting so if you want to watch more please make sure that you have subscribed to the channel and uh, i'll meet you in the next episode of pythonic until then signing off